Guys, how are we doing? Today we're going to talk about hidden tractor features. Yeah, features that you may not know about. Maybe you've owned your tractor for 5, 10, 15 years and maybe you just don't know. Maybe you're a brand new tractor owner or maybe you're in the market. I'm going to tell you some things that a lot of these tractors have in the subcompact and compact tractor world. Maybe not every tractor, but it could be on yours, so make sure you check it out. And if you have anything else to add to the list, I'd love to hear about it. Leave a comment below. And while you're at it, hit that subscribe button. Make sure you check out the other videos at Goodworks Tractors and go to goodworkstractors.com. I can help you out with a tractor or an attachment, put together a package for you, and help with delivery and financing too. All right, here we go. So the first feature we're going to talk about here is the RIO, the reverse override. What that feature is going to allow you to do is mow backwards. So you want to mow real tight and trim to a tree. Of course, always safety first. Make sure you're looking behind you. Follow your manual to a T. However, the reverse override is made for those mid-mount mowers, and it's found on a lot of different models out there. So you might have a type that has a pull-type knob that you pull up and down. You could have a version like this right here, this little yellow button that you see where you can push it up to turn it on, and this would turn your mower deck on. And then you can push it even further and hold that. And that's going to allow you to keep mowing, keep those blades spinning, the mid-PTO in action as you go backwards. So I don't want to turn this machine on because it'd be too loud for you guys, but the general concept is this. So let's say you're driving forward, you're mowing your lawn this way, and you want to trim tight around a tree or around a landscape bed, for instance. So you're going forward, you're mowing, your foot is on the forward pedal, the mower deck's on. Go ahead and take your foot off the hydrostatic pedal, and then at that point, you're going to push in all the way in and hold, or if you have a pull type, pull up all the way and hold it in that position. At that point, while you're holding it, Go ahead and push the reverse pedal. At that point, as long as you're pushing the reverse pedal, you can let go of that yellow button and let it go down to its natural engaged position. You'll then be able to back up, go in reverse, and mow tight to your tree, mow tight to your landscape bed, whatever the case might be. Again, safety first. So the next item I wanna talk about are gonna be wiring harnesses that are already there on the back of your tractor. The model we're looking at right here is a John Deere 1025R, but I know that they're on a lot of other models by John Deere, I believe some by Kubota and some other manufacturers as well. And so if you're gonna look close down here, you're gonna see you've got this little sucker tucked down in here and another one right over here. And what this allows you to do is you can just break apart these little fittings right here, these little connectors, just like, ah, yeah, of course it doesn't wanna be easy. There you go, you can see one of them there for instance. And what that's going to allow you to do is plug in some other lights or other accessories attachment or um, accessories or electronic controls to your tractor. So typically you are going to mount lights to these because when you turn on your light switch, you'll have additional, maybe they're mounted on the ROPS up here or you have them mounted up front. It depends where you have them wired to. You can have them front facing, rear facing, all that kind of thing. And so it's a really nice feature that's on a lot of tractors. A lot of folks just don't know about it, but when you turn your regular light switch on, then these lights will come on at the same time. So it makes it pretty easy. Uh, what do they call these, bullet connectors? I don't know, somebody can remind me, but put a comment in the section there if you have another idea of what you can use these connectors for. I'm sure there's folks that are a lot more creative than I am that have done some really cool things with them. So anyway, check the back of your tractor. Lots of times they're hidden somewhere down in this area. Maybe follow the wiring from your other lights that are somewhere down in this area and see where they can connect into. But a pretty cool feature and it might be able to help you out. Okay, the next one we're gonna talk about is something that's pretty cool. You know, I've seen it several times over the years. And again, this doesn't really matter what the manufacturer of tractor is. Guys are pretty creative. And I need to do this on one of the tractors that I keep. And it's gonna be creating some more usable storage right here in the tube on your loader. So I've seen some guys do some different things right here, whether it's just capping off the ends and putting a chain in here. I've seen somebody actually make a whole tube, you know, just a PVC tube, just size it accordingly, push it the whole way in here and make it like a tray. So the other end almost had a pull handle where you could just pull it right out and you've got your chain in there or whatever little bars or tools that you wanna keep right in here inside the tube. Thought that was super creative. Just a very good way to get some additional storage. That's something that everybody's looking for in a tractor because they just don't come with a lot of storage space. Another good idea though, get yourself a big tool rack. You can put that on the three point hitch. It's the ultimate tool storage. It keeps your garage organized. You can take it out in the field with you. Good ballast weight, multi-purpose for sure. I'd love to hear from you. I'm sure some of you watching have made good use out of this storage space right here. What else can we do with it guys? Okay, so next one up here is going to be on a three-point hitch. This is a John Deere 4M series. I think this one's a 4052M. Going to be found on quite a few tractors, quite a few models out there. Maybe not your model, but it's pretty cool. It's something that you don't really know about, and you might even see it there, and you just don't 
get it, you just figure maybe it's a different position. And what I'm talking about is this little point right here. And so you can position this, rotate it 90 degrees, and it's going to go into a float function. Okay, so believe it or not, it's a float function for your three-point hitch. And what that's useful for is if you have, say, a, uh, a finish mower on the backside or even a brush hog and something that's not going to be engaged in the ground like a tiller or a disc that kind of thing but riding along the surface of the ground it's going to allow that that implement to go up and down with the surface versus wanting to almost dig in a little bit when your three-point hitch is down so i'll show you what i mean here but it gives you a little bit of extra versatility and so when you want to use it in this position is if you're using a tiller or a disc you know something where you're engaging the ground you want to have a little bit more force that's going down in there now keep in mind you know you can lift up on this okay so naturally you do have a little bit of float on your three-point hitch but it's just another way to get some more flexibility out of the three-point hitch itself let me show you what i mean so if we take this pin out right here on the back side just like that and then i pull just this little fitting off right here what i can do is i can pull this out and I can rotate it just like that 90 degrees and I don't really have to put these back on there I can demonstrate without doing so and what I'll do is just go like this up and down you can see how easy that just floats it moves up and down just like that so imagine you're going along and mowing with a finish mower in the back here you can see how easy this is going to allow it to follow the contour of the ground versus uh, staying at the same level there so again float position on a three-point hitch reference your manual it is in there and uh, gives you a little bit more flexibility Okay, so next one we're going to talk about is going to be down here at the loader joystick. And we're actually going to have two things that we talk about here. So the first one that we're going to talk about is going to be what's called a loader lockout valve. And this is something that is on every tractor, at least every tractor I've ever seen that has a loader on it. And so this is going to be what it looks like on a lot of the John Deere's. A little knob that you can pull out like this or push it back in. And essentially it's going to lock out the functionality of the joystick. And so if I have this in the current position that it is right now, it's going to be locked out. And I'm not, what that means is I can't move this joystick around. It's just essentially locked out. I wouldn't be able to raise the loader, lower the loader, do any curl or roll or anything like that. If I pull it back out to its normal position, it returns to allow me to be able to move it in whatever position that I want to go to. So let's say you have your loader all the way up in the air here and you want to wash the underside of your mower deck, for instance, or you have something, anything hanging up. Say you get a deer, opening day of gun season, you shoot a deer and you got it hanging up and you don't want that bucket to fall down accidentally. So you got your kids on the tractor or whatever else it might be. Go ahead and gauge that loader lockout function and then no matter what you do, if anything gets bumped into here, nothing's going to happen to you. You can see there, there's no functionality on the bucket, on the loader itself. It's safe, it's in place. It's something that, to be honest with you, a lot of tractors that come into stock, Kubotas, John Deere's, whatever it might be, it's so infrequently used that it's typically stuck in place. And so you gotta put a little bit of penetrating oil, a little grease on there and work it back and forth in order to get it to be functional just because it's just almost never used, but it's nice to know that it's there and that you have the option to use it if needed. You know, so while we're sitting here, I'm gonna tell you about another feature related to the loader and the joystick. And it's something I've hit on before, but I wanna let you know again because it is not well known about. And so that is the float function on your loader. Most of the time you're gonna think about four functions that your loader has, right? You can dump it, you can curl it, you can lower it, and you can raise it. But there's a fifth function there that can be very beneficial, whether you have a loader on, whether you have a plow blade on, a snow blower, whatever else might be attached and tied into those SCVs, whatever hydraulics are plugged in there. The float function is basically going to relieve that pressure. There's not gonna be hydraulic force. You know, There's not gonna be that fluid going through the lines at that point. And so if I push all the way forward like this, it's simply gravity that's gonna do its thing. It's gonna bring the attachment, whatever it is, to the ground. And then if I'm going forward, let's say I have a plow on there or a snow pusher or even a bucket, it's just gonna follow the contour of the ground as I'm driving forward. Let's say you have a big pile of mulch or a big pile of topsoil or stone for your driveway and you wanna do a decent job spreading it out. It is pretty nice to be able to use the bucket because it's right in front of you. You can have a lot better control and eyesight and visibility with that um, feature there. And so you can roll the front edge of the bucket forward and then back up when it's in the float position like this. You can just back up and kind of spread out your mulch or your dirt or your stone and just kind of feather it a little bit. It gives you a lot more flexibility without putting that down pressure, that hydraulic down pressure that might otherwise dig in. And that digging in can be very damaging as well if you're driving forward. If you are plowing your drive, whether it's stone, asphalt, concrete, whatever it is, if you have a bucket or a, 
a plow wedge or a snow blower and it's got down pressure that's forcing and scraping hard along that surface, it's very easy to damage that and could also damage your tractor as well. So that float function, again, just this would be regular down pressure right here. Go beyond that and you're going to be in the float function. You can see how it stays there. In order to get back out of it, it's very easy. Just pop it right back out. Easy as that, but it's a, a hidden feature that not a lot of folks know about and you can use it to your advantage. So this is a fun one here. This is not so much a hidden feature, but it's gonna open up the versatility of your tractor. If you're like 90% of tractor owners out there in the subcompact and compact world, then you don't have a third function or a diverter kit on your machine. However, if you still wanna use a grapple, then I have a couple options for you. Check out the other videos. I'll go ahead and post a link up top so you can see what those options are, but you're staring at one of them right now. This is a pretty sweet feature here. It's an electric grapple. You can just put it on to your John Deere quick attach or to your skid steer quick attach, like the Kubota that's sitting over here. So I have them for either style of setup. The skid steer style will be black in color, but again, this is electric. It comes with everything you need. You don't have to hook it up to your hydraulic system at all. Just hook it up to the battery, comes with all you need. You can do it in a half hour or less and away you go. So the other hydraulic free option that you have is something called a brush crusher. That's what you're gonna see right here. So this is a little bit cheaper typically than the electric grapple. A little bit different functionality. Again, check out that video link there because it'll tell you all about it. A, a picture's worth a thousand words, at least in my opinion. So this is a pretty cool attachment right here and something you definitely need to check out for your machine. So the next thing I want to tell you about is going to be a convenient location to add some mirrors or maybe some other accessories to your machine. Most John Deere tractors on their front end loaders are going to have a little extra hole right here at the top. It's just like an accessory slot and you could put a mirror on there. You could put little stanchions and put some uh, lights on there as well even. Or I've seen guys put toolboxes on here, little portable radios, cup holders, all sorts of crazy stuff on here. And so you can see over here, I've utilized one of these holes down here to put a mirror on. It's very nice to have that visibility. I do a lot of driving down the road. Um, you know, even if you're in the field, in the shop like I have here, it's just nice to have, especially on your loader joystick side. This isn't the side that you're really getting on and off a tractor a lot. So it's really completely out of the way for the most part. You know, if you don't have your loader on it, it's not going to be there. And so if you are snow blowing in the wintertime, maybe you want to try to find some different rig or different setup that you can put it on. But if you have your loader on your tractor, then this is a pretty convenient setup. These mirrors here are for sale on my Amazon store. I'll have a link below in the description. You can get different sizes. This is a really nice size here, the 7x12. There's a smaller version as well. But if you have a Kubota, a Massey, a Coyote, whatever it might be, I'm sure you can get creative and find a way to attach it, but just know on your John Deere's, you're gonna have this little hole here. It really doesn't get used for anything else that I know of anyways. If you guys know of what it's supposed to be used for besides that, let me know. Again, leave a comment below. But yeah, check it out. Pretty sweet feature. Okay, so it's something that's on pretty much every tractor, but I am asked about this all the time, and it's whether or not you have glow plugs or an air intake heater or whatever it might be, something to warm up the block and the, the diesel in there to make things start easier in the winter time. And so essentially every tractor is gonna have one or the other or both. And this tractor here, this is a Kubota BX for instance. What you do with this one is you just turn the key part way and you can see that little orange light. I'm turning it off, turn it back on. And so this light's gonna stay on as long as I wanna hold it in like that. And there's other models like the John Deere 1025R. That one there, you turn the key part way and that same light's gonna come on. It's gonna have another a very similar little orange glow plug, little you know, curly Q looking light, just like that. It'll stay on for three, four, five seconds and then turn off and you can turn your machine on. At the same time, if you need to run it again, cycle it over, over and over again, you can do that without any harm to it. And in fact, it's, it's just fine to do that. Some of the larger models are only gonna have glow plugs that come on if it's required. It's gonna sense the temperature and you'll see it's 40 degrees outside, you're not gonna see anything. If you have your tractor sitting outside and it's 10 degrees though, you're probably gonna see a light come on on your on the dash of your screen and it may only come on, it may just flicker for just a, a half a second, just shorter than you even think is possible. But it could be on for several seconds and other models will tell you on the dash, they'll have a little electronic display that says, you know, wait to start or something along those lines. So your model's gonna vary, but rest assured that if it's a diesel, it's gonna have some sort of um, feature in place to aid with cold weather starting. And reference your manual because it'll tell you exactly what you need to do. Okay, so this feature is on essentially every subcompact or compact tractor on the market. In fact, I don't think I've ever had one that hasn't had this feature. I don't know when it was implemented, but it's called a rate of drop or a speed of drop control. Typically, it's going to be uh, found right down here in between your legs. Now on some models though, you will see it underneath the seat. There'll be a little 
a little valve, just a little handle underneath here that you might be able to control and turn it. And what you're going to do is you're going to open and close a valve tied into your rock shaft control or your three-point hitch. And so whatever is attached to your three-point hitch is going to control how fast or slow it raises and lowers. And so if you have a box blade on there or a rear blade and you want to have really fine control over adjusting it up and down, you can essentially almost close this valve the entire way and allow it to go up and down really slow. And if you open it the whole way, what it's going to do is raise and lower very quickly, which isn't really useful for most applications. Well guys, hopefully you found that enjoyable and you learned a few things along the way. If you have some other hidden features or not so well known features on your tractor, it'd be great to hear from it, share it with everybody else, leave a comment below. And if you haven't done so yet, please consider subscribing by hitting that subscribe button below. Would love to have you follow along. Head on over to goodworkstractors.com. Again, I can help you with a tractor with an attachment, put together a whole package for you, help with delivery and financing too. Until next time, take care. We'll see you soon. Guys, how we doing? Today we're going to talk about... the heck was that? What? Yeah, but the door was already closed. It was right in the three-point hitch, serves this ballast weight, ton of stool... ton of stool storage. This is a pretty cool attachment right here and something you definitely need to check out.